Hi everyone, it's Chelsea here, bringing you another segment of living in Southwest Florida. If you're thinking of moving to Fort Myers, Cape Coral, or any of the surrounding areas, then you might have wondered if now really is a good time to buy a home. So we're gonna dive deeper on this a little bit more. But before we jump in really quickly, it would mean a lot to me if I could go ahead and have you hit that like button so that YouTube algorithms share this information with others and it lets me know what you'd like more of. As a thank you, here's a shot of an American flag backlit to the low setting sun in Cape Coral. I might have shared this already, but I couldn't remember and I thought it was pretty special looking. So whether I did or not, I'm sharing it again. And if you know I did or not, then please feel free to share with me in the comments. But really quickly, I wouldn't be good at my job if I didn't remind you how much I love helping people from all over the country buy and sell their homes here in Southwest Florida. So if you or anyone you know of are even thinking about moving, then feel free to use the contact information below. All right, let's jump right in. discussions going on right now about whether or not is a good time to buy a house. And I get it. For many people, it may not make sense right now, but it's always the right time to buy the right house. What I mean by that is sometimes the numbers make sense on certain homes. And in that case, you may not want to lose out on the opportunity. So let's explore some of those reasons why buying right now might make sense. Before any of the other reasons why someone might consider wanting to move and consider those costs of waiting, a big one to consider first and foremost is if it affects employment and an employment opportunity. If you need to come to the area because of a job, then you might want to consider buying a home, especially since rentals are so few and rental rates are so high. Speaking of rentals, there is a cost of equity. Equity is the difference between the amount that a homeowner owes to the bank and the amount that they can resell the home for. So for example, if a home is worth $500,000 and the owner owes $300,000, then they have $200,000 left in equity. Anyone who has a mortgage or a rental will be paying a monthly amount. If you own the home, a portion of that payment every month is essentially money back to yourself in the form of equity. When you rent a home, you are essentially paying someone else's mortgage, giving them the equity. So to continue with the example above, let's say that that payment every month is $2,500. For the renter, all $2,500 is going towards rent for the landlord, but a homeowner has that portion of the $2,500 that's now a reduction on how much they owe, giving them some money essentially back to themselves. Let's hypothetically say that this number is $200. I'm just going to use this for simplicity, but the longer you pay the mortgage, the more you pay yourself and the greater that equity increases month over month. But for using a flat $200 in equity over the course of the year, they will have $2,400 in equity than they had before. In this example, both people could afford the $2,500. Only one of them was keeping about a payment back to themselves and the other isn't. In other words, the renters are losing out on this $2,400 every year, and they will have nothing to show for at the end of the lease term. On the other hand, when you buy the home, you're building equity with each mortgage payment. This equity can then be used as a financial resource in the future, such as for retirement or for a down payment on another house. Another thing to consider with rentals, after many landlords sold their rental homes during the COVID boom, there are a lot less options out there and a much tighter rental inventory. This means that rental rates are the highest they've ever been thanks to supply and demand, and that it may be more expensive per month to rent than it would be to buy. Another cost of waiting is the cost in tax breaks. Homeowners can deduct mortgage interest and their property taxes from federal income taxes. Always check with your tax professional as that is not my area of expertise, and I am not going to pretend to know about your specific situation. So please consult with a professional and do not use this as actual tax advice. However, things to consider would be that the homeowners can use the tax breaks from owning their property in a number of different ways. Some of the most common tax breaks include a mortgage interest deduction. The IRS allows homeowners to deduct any interest paid on their mortgage for the up to the first $750,000 of value on the home. So for example, if you paid $12,000 in mortgage interest, you can write that off as a deduction at the end of the year on your taxes. Another thing that can be deducted is property taxes. 
So if you paid $5,000 for the year as part of your monthly mortgage, then that can be removed from your tax filing as well. A HELOC or a home equity line of credit also gets your interest deductions. If you're self-employed, then there's a whole slew of tax deductions you may have available to you as well. So let's go back to the example of renting versus owning, where both people are paying $2,500. For the owner in our example, they are paying $200 in equity to themselves, and let's say that their mortgage bill includes another $300 a month for being collected for their taxes, and $1,800 is their interest. I know, I know that looks crazy, but if you look at an amortization calculator, the interest is always highest in the beginning. So for on year one, it's going to be the highest it'll be. Anyway, I digress. In this example, that means that the homeowner has the potential writing off of their taxes $2,100 a month in write-ins and another $200 in their equity. And the renter's unable to do any of this. Again, speak with your tax accountant on this one. I am not a CPA or financial advisor, and so you should speak with your advisors to see exactly how this could work for you and what those numbers look like. All right, I think now is the time to mention the cost of interest. Yes, interest rates are high. When I'm compiling this, they are averaging about seven and a quarter. The Fed met this past week and they stated they weren't raising any interest rates this go around, but they do plan on doing one more by the end of the year. They also indicated that they intend to do less rate cuts next year than they had planned. In other words, if a buyer is waiting for interest rates to drop, it may be some time before this happens. I had buyers last year who said that they were going to wait for interest rates to come down. And at this point, they're much higher than when we first started speaking about it, which leaves them sitting on the sidelines. They're not building the equity or living the life that they dreamed of. And perhaps they're going to be sitting there longer than they expected to. There's a saying in the industry, marry the house and date the rate. Granted, rates currently are still below the trend line, which is historically at 8%, and we're getting very close there. But in the next year or two, there will be rate cuts. So if you see the home you love and can afford the payment, then it may be worth considering it that you go ahead and buy the home and then refinance later once the rates drop. I saw a great example of this the other day. Let's say someone decides to buy a house now at $400,000. They're putting down a down payment of 5%, which is $20,000, and the rate is seven and a quarter, the payment being $25.60 a month. Say that same person decided to wait until next year. By then, buyers have begun to return to the marketplace because the rates have lowered. The same house that they planned on paying $400 for has now followed the historic trend line, and that says that year over year, over time, there's gonna be about a 4% interest growth. Now the house is at $415,750. The rates might have lowered at 6.125 and the payment might be a little bit lower at 2405, but since they didn't buy for a year, they've now lost $3,700 in equity from the past year where they could have been paying it to themselves. Also, now that 5% down payment is $788 higher. There's $15,750 in lost appreciation, and the mortgage is higher, meaning they'll be paying more over the length of the loan. In this scenario, it makes sense to have considered paying for the higher monthly temporarily in order to refi out and not lose more money over the long term. I've mentioned something in this scenario that we haven't discussed yet, and that is the cost of waiting includes available inventory. Right now, we are in our slowest months of the year. Inventory is at four months, which is considered to be about a balanced market. There are more options available and more motivated sellers ready to sell. My expectation in the next several months is that we'll see snowbirds return, which will increase demand. Remember, our second home market tends to be higher all cash percentage anyway, so it'll be less affected by these higher rates. If that holds true in the upcoming months, we'll be hitting higher demand. So for those debating now or for waiting six months, a cost of inventory availability might be something to weigh too. One last thing that I want to point out, naysayers, especially in my last example, may say that the reason that they are waiting is for prices to come down first. Something I think should be considered is how long those people intend to keep the home. Real estate is cyclical. Listen, it will go down and it'll go back up again. Statistically speaking, anyone who holds real estate for 10 years will be up from when they bought it. So even if there are price corrections after a purchase and it dips, if they hold on to it long enough, the point is moot. Not to mention that for all of those years of benefits that there would have been other reasons I've already discussed at play. 
And lastly, I'm talking about the cost of lifestyle. People want to go live the lives that they've always dreamed of living. And how long do you want to defer that? All right. I'd love to hear thoughts. I know this is kind of a hot button topic and I'd love to hear what you think. So feel free to drop them in the comments below. I have a feeling that I'm going to get a lot of you disagreeing with me on this, but honestly, it's just math. I have a brand new 96 page beautiful guide to moving in Lee County that has been a huge labor of love for me. If you'd like to own a copy, then the link can be found in my link tree, which can be found below. And if you have any questions about the data or if you'd like to drill down and compare specific neighborhoods like say Cape Coral versus Fort Myers or waterfront homes or pool homes or whatever your specific circumstances call for, then feel free to reach out to the contact info in the description below. Myself and the network of agents I have throughout the United States are here and we're ready to help you with your move. My video schedule can sometimes be erratic, so if you'd like more videos like this, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when we drop another one. If you're ready to go ahead and get that ball rolling with your move to Southwest Florida, then there is a link in the description below to set up a personalized home search, and that'll be tailored specifically to you. Oftentimes when you search on web aggregates, it limits your capabilities. But when I build out the search, you're gonna have many more options available, and then we can begin having a conversation about what your home in Florida will look like. Or feel free to use CapeCoralFortMyersRealEstate.com for all the latest listings to hit the marketplace and begin getting comfortable with your marketplace. There's no obligations. And don't forget to add me on social media and follow along as we post weekly and daily articles and information that you may find handy and give you insight as to what life in Florida looks like. We are posting there almost all day long. And as always, we appreciate it when you leave us a comment and hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bells so that you can be notified when we drop future videos that may help you with living in Southwest Florida. All right, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I wish you much health and happiness.